All right, so we're in Tel Aviv. We're at uh, Tel Shomer Hospital. There's about 50 soldiers here and their families. Uh, a lot of them are coming in every single day. Some, hopefully, some are leaving soon. Uh, we're taking this opportunity to not just bring pizzas to the guys in the field, but to bring really warm food, good food from a restaurant to the guys and their families who are also living here. Their mother, their father, their grandfather, their brother. And they're really, uh, you know, we did this the other day and that's why we're doing it again because it brings in so much strength that people throughout the world care about them and love them. But not only that, but they're actually getting something practical and they're just gonna love it. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so here we are. We're in uh, Tel Shoma Hospital and we got our whole team together. There's uh, 50 families who are, who are with, their, with their children who were injured in, in this war. And we're all gonna come together. We have two volunteers and we have four waiters and a manager from the restaurant. And Elisheva is uh, briefing them on, uh, on what the story is. Get everybody excited and uh, we're gonna go in a few minutes. We uh, met Anat, who is a mother of a of a soldier who was injured, and Anat is so. Uh, I'm so excited to hear that all over the world they are very interesting to to make us to feel that everybody uh, wants to help and uh, it's. It makes me, it gives me um, no power to continue to be with my son, to help him, to help him to be well, to stand on his foot. So I want to say thank you, everybody, that think about us and wants to help us. Thank you. What, are you seeing a lot of visitors come through the hospital? Yes, of yeah. our country that coming and wants to be a big hug to everybody here, the soldiers, the families, and uh, gives us uh, you know, strength. To, to continue to be with our children. They are children, soldiers are children. How's your son right now as far as being... He's slowly but surely. He's, uh, he's got a big... And, uh, you know, it will take time. He will stand on his foot. But uh, we have all the time for this until he will be... Does he have a girlfriend? It will, um, not exactly. <laughs> she came to visit a few times. Yeah. Does it? A lot of uh, girls. Oh, a lot of girls. Um, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. He's a nice guy and smart, and he's a fighter, you know. And now he's fighting to be to stand on his feet. He will run in a few months, he will run, I believe. You know, sometimes uh, when, when there's a soldier out fighting, they're not connected, they didn't have cell phones, they couldn't call no. you, nothing. No. Uh, they don't have a nothing. TV, obviously, their commanders are... They didn't come home about uh, six uh, Saturdays before. Six weeks? Six weeks, six weeks before and we came to the hospital. I met him in the hospital. Yeah. So when we have all the time. This is my house now, my hospital. I'm coming in the morning and I'm leaving about 11, midnight, something like this. All right, so we're back with Elisheva. We weren't able to bring the camera inside and, and, uh, and film with the soldiers, but we, we were able to speak to one of the mothers. But Elisheva was able to talk to all the families and all the soldiers, and she's going to give us a quick wrap-up. So we were mostly in, uh, in the rehabilitation area, and uh, we spoke to the soldiers there, and they were so 
excited and the families were so amazed and blown away and you could see and they told us how much strength it gives them and uh, some of them even said this was the best thing anyone has brought them the whole time they've been there which is saying something because people are in and out all the time like just the time we're there there are like lines of people lined up to get into each room so that's saying something that, it, that we really like wanted to give them something that they wanted and um, it was an amazing experience Okay, so we just got into the restaurant and we uh, saw that there was uh, two two soldiers sitting here uh, uh, together, and uh, Donna Donna was sitting here and seeing all these all this food being stacked up, and she must have been you know, curious about what's going on. What do you think about people throughout the world buying buying lunch for not just the soldiers but also the the families of the soldiers in the hospital? Uh, the most important question to ask though is uh, is the food good? <laughs> Alright, so this is the planning table here. This is where everything goes, all the orders are, and making sure that everything is set up in place. You can see that it's not so easy to fulfill orders for 50 families and then have it delivered in the right place. So this is where the, uh, this is the war room here. We just finished to take all the reservation for the soldiers. It was very tense for us. It was very, really, really um, remarkable for us. And now all the girls, the waitress, just packing the things and taking it back to the hospital. You were in the army? Yes, of course. And uh, are you? You're you're not called up now. No, uh, actually I was in the Air Force and uh, some plans are changed uh, during the time I've been there, so now I'm here, but my heart is there. So, so when the war started and you knew that you weren't going to be called up, were you, you feel like you, you felt like you were missing out, like you should have been uh, doing something? Of course, of course. It's not only that I'm missing out in the Air Force, I just wanted to be in Gaza and to make to, to be with uh, my brothers there, so I want to change my, my role, you know, because I've been with the uh, information in the Air Force and now uh, I just wanted to be a fighter with, uh, with, uh, with my soldiers. So because you can't be in there with them, how did it feel to be able to go into the hospital and to actually see the guys that were... Uh, it's actually amazing because you see the guys and they the shot and some of them cannot talk and you realize you can be there instead of them. What was the reaction that you got from them when you first walked in? Actually, like initially, when you first walked in? Yeah, actually all of them uh, smiled at us and was super polite and was super surprised. To, be, to see that there is uh, people that want to donate and to, to make something good for them. Uh, most of them was kind and, uh, and happy. They were happy. They were happy when you didn't come in with a bag of bamba about a menu in your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it, they said it was the best donation they had. They had, they had in the two or three weeks there. So they say it's the best idea and uh, they're really, really glad. We okay, so we're standing here with uh, Limod and uh, Eli Sheva told me that she had called you yesterday or the day before asking uh, whether or not we could come come here and do something for the soldiers. Yeah. And your reaction was, do you remember? Yeah. Tell her that I want, you know, I can give whatever I could. I can give for the, the five, fa five families, like, on, on the house. And of course we will uh, come. Yeah, so you thought, you thought that yeah, Sheva was asking you for a donation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how did you really feel afterwards when we said that that we're looking to pay 
for 50 families as the owner of a business on a very slow time. Yeah, yeah, it's a very difficult time for the small business in Israel. And uh, for us, it's, first of all, it's the honor that you pick us to be the, the, the restaurant that, you know, give the soldiers the, this uh, donation. And second of all, it was uh, good for the business and, you know, help us uh, to, you know, in these this difficult times. If we can, if we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, be in the battle, because in the battle, I'm, uh, I'm a soldier and I've been uh, in a couple of fights in uh, my life. And uh, so we glad that we can you know, dominate here and give our, our part. So what uh, what made you want to come to the hospital? You're the owner. You could have just sent all the staff you wanted over there, and, and that's it, and stayed here. It's something that we, we all do. Like, we all want to be part of uh, this, uh, this big uh, uh, operation in Gaza. So, and uh, for us, the owner. So here are the guys in the kitchen working hard. It's hot in here, but they're listening to Bob Marley. We love, we all, we all love Bob Marley. It's a video. It's a video, yeah. Ah, I'm just standing oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so again, we're still in the restaurant, and on the way back from the hospital, I just had to share this story with with me, and uh, it's something something spectacular what happened in the hospital. So, something spectacular. So go ahead. Well, it was just a really nice story. We we walked ahead um, of one of these soldiers, and he's lying on his side, and he had a lot of bruises on, a lot of things going on, and um, this woman sitting at his bedside, I guess she was his sister. She looked at the menu and she said, well, he can't really order anything because his mouth is wired shut. He can only drink things. So even though we weren't offering that, that type of menu, we weren't offering shakes, he, we let him order a shake. They're going to make it specially here and bring it to him first to make sure that it's still cold and it's still a shake and it doesn't like separate. So that was that. Nice. One more question. Why is your mouth orange? Why is my mouth orange? No way. It's orange? This is so good. This is apple carrot drink from the restaurant. It's so good. Oh my gosh. It's worth it to come back for this.